for the Supreme Court to Wisconsin. <laughs> You know, when you look at a candidate, you know, especially for the Supreme Court, especially in these political times and everything that's going on in politics, you got to consider a couple of things. One is, you know, what are a person's credentials in terms of her understanding of the law and her conduct as a judge? And she has just been impeccable in those areas. I'm not so sure you can say the same thing about her opponent at this point. But she has been impeccable in those areas. The other quality that you look for is somebody who's going to really go out there and work hard, someone who's going to meet with people, someone who's going to take the scrutiny of the media, the attacks from the other side, the negativity from the other side, and keep going, and keep going, and keep going. And we knew that Joanne was that kind of candidate because we worked with her before back in 2011, when I still think we won that election until a mysterious ballot box showed up in Waukesha that flipped the election. So, um, still a mystery. At any rate, um, without further ado, please welcome Joanne Kloppenberg, our candidate for Supreme Court of Wisconsin. the opportunity to speak with you. It is an honor. All of you have gone, who go above and beyond every day to, to serve working families and your communities. I am very grateful for the commitment and heart that you folks show all the time, no matter how challenging the times around you are. Well, it is true that about five years ago, all of you were working hard with me, with our hearts full of hope for a court that would work for all of us. Well now, five years later, that hope is within our grasp. This race is about the future of our Supreme Court. It's about what kind of court it ought to be, what kind of justices we should be electing to the court. I've been to all 72 counties several times over now, and I'm struck by people's shared hopes for the court and for what the court ought to be. It ought to be a place where everybody gets a fair shake. It ought to be a place where every justice approaches every case with an open mind. It should be a place where the outcome of any case is not a foregone conclusion. In short, it should be a place where we can all be confident that justice is being done without fear and favor. Everywhere I go, people tell me they want all three branches of government to be working for them. They want their local governments to be allowed to work for them. And they want the court to serve as the independent check and balance on the other political branches that it was designed to be. And that's why I'm running, because I'm unwilling to surrender the court to the partisan politics and the outside special interests that threaten to undermine the independence and integrity of the court. And that's what distinguishes me from my opponent, independence and integrity and experience. Just a few weeks ago, we had a primary, and the people spoke loudly. Everyone in Wisconsin wants a court that is independent, free of partisan politics, free of special interests, and not dominated by Scott Walker. We had a... We had a tremendous turnout. With, the, with me and Rebecca Bradley essentially tied, and when you add the voters for Judge Joe Donald and the voters for me, 55% of the people who voted voted for a change on our Supreme Court. And I'm honored to have Judge Joe Donald's endorsement. And together with his endorsement, people are coming together from all over the state to form a winning coalition that will make change happen on April 5th. they'll be independent and impartial when they get on the bench. The challenge for voters is to determine who is most likely to deliver on that promise. And you can tell by how we got where we are. And I'll spend a few moments to tell you how I got where I am. I was elected to the Court of Appeals in 2012. 
In the three and a half years since, I have issued hundreds of written decisions in all different areas of law that show me to be an independent, fair, impartial, thoughtful, and principled appellate court judge. I'm one of 16 judges on the Court of Appeals. Statewide, the Court of Appeals handles about 3,000 cases a year. I'm the presiding judge in my district, District 4, which sits in Madison, but we get cases from all over the state. I have great respect for my colleagues, even though we don't always agree, and I'm honored they chose me to be the presiding judge in my district. Before I was elected to the Court of Appeals, I was an Assistant Attorney General of the Department of Justice for 23 years. I was hired by Republican Attorney General Don Hannaway by acing the civil service exam, which we don't have anymore. <laughs> and I served under four attorneys general from both political parties. I represented the interests of the people of Wisconsin in circuit courts around the state and argued many times in the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court. And I should note that in those 23 years, I saw many oral arguments, my own, my colleagues. I brought law students to see the oral arguments throughout each semester. And never once did I see a justice leave in the middle of oral argument. <laughs> I practice in many different areas of law, constitutional law, administrative law, appellate law, environmental law. I've prosecuted a lot of cases to help keep our air and water clean. Before I was elected to the, before I went to law school, I served in the Peace Corps in Botswana in Africa, planning and obtaining international financing for rural development projects around the country. Returned to the States, started the Federal Nutrition Program for women, infants, and children in two poor rural counties in upstate New York, and then moved to Madison in 1985, where I lived in the same house and raised our three kids. I went to law school right away with the two oldest of those kids, paid my tuition by teaching legal writing, interned for Justice Shirley Abrahamson while I was at law school, graduated with honors and awards, clerked for Chief Judge Barbara Crabb in the federal court before, for a little over a year before joining the Department of Justice. The difference between how I got where I am and how my opponent got where she is could not be clearer. Rebecca Bradley was appointed three times to three judgeships in three years by Governor Walker. She owes her judicial career to Governor Walker. I owe my judicial career to the people of Wisconsin. Governor Walker appointed her first to the Milwaukee County <coughs> Circuit Court, then the Court of Appeals just last May, after she spent a little over two years in Children's Court. And then he made the very political decision to appoint her to the Supreme Court in October of last year when she was an announced candidate for an open seat. That fast-track series of appointments indicates that it was politics, not qualifications, that got her to the court. She has a very partisan background that she's brought with her into this campaign and onto the court. She was a member of the Republican National Lawyers Association, continues to be an active member of the Federalist Society, which was established by Justice Scalia to nurture very conservative, extremely conservative, right-wing jurists and lawyers around the country. The Republican Party is helping to pay for her campaign financing and operations, and she left oral arguments um, a week ago or so to go speak, make a campaign speech to Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce, which is a big money special interest with very close ties to Governor Walker. Our supporter of Rebecca Bradley's, Rick Essenberg, wrote to the governor saying, Rebecca will, will receive, can expect to receive the strong support of conservatives. She has paid her dues. That will not be ignored. And paying your dues to conservative causes is not a qualification for service on our Supreme Court. Rebecca Bradley was caught on tape talking about her friends running ads for her in 2013. 13 when she ran after she was first appointed to the Milwaukee County Circuit Court. And sure enough, Club for Growth put in $167,000 to help her win a very tight election. Her friends put in almost a million dollars worth of ads before the primary supporting her candidacy, and they're back at it again. And they are, this time, this is the Wisconsin Alliance for Reform, associated with the Koch brothers, Club for Growth, and Governor Walker. They will try to distort my record. Up things, they're, they're trying to label me. And groups that don't have the facts or want to hide the facts, 
resort to labels. The facts are that I am, I am the only candidate with a proven track record as a fair, independent, thoughtful, and principled appellate court judge. I'm the only candidate with a truly nonpartisan background. I'm the only candidate with superior judicial and legal qualifications. And I'm the only candidate who has spent my career standing up for all of the people of Wisconsin. My opponent simply has not done any of those. And to tell you the truth, I'm not scared of the special interests. I've got folks like you around the state su supporting me and getting my back. I have spent my career standing up to special interests in partisan politics, and I'm not going to stop now. And I do need all of you to stand with me against the politics as usual that don't belong in our court, and against the influence of special, of big money to special interests that don't have to disclose their donors, that want the court to work for them, not for the people of Wisconsin. Most of all, we all need to come together for independence and integrity. And that's what I have been standing for my whole career. We need all to come together for a justice who is qualified to serve on our Supreme Court. I've issued hundreds of appellate decisions that show I am an independent and fair appellate court judge. We need to come together for a court that works as it should, as an independent check and balance on the other political branches of government. For over 26 years, I stood up for all the people of Wisconsin. I ask for your votes, your support, your energy, and your hard work once again so that I can continue doing just that as a justice on our Supreme Court. Thank you so much. does authorize the legislature to do that. The legislature has never did it, done it. They were thinking about doing it a year or so ago and it didn't go anywhere. I don't I don't think right now we that's something that is on anybody's priority. 